This is the DB Power 9.5 inch portable DVD player. Comes with your wall adapter, the remote, a USB joystick, a video cable, and a car power adapter. The unit is one and three quarter inches tall, nine and a half inches wide, seven inches deep. Okay, on the side of the unit, you have your power input, on off button, AV in, AV out, your headphone jack, SD card slot, and a USB card slot. On the back of the unit is the joystick USB input. On the front is your remote sensor and the battery indicator lights. It takes about three hours to fully recharge the battery. During that time the light is red and it uses about seven watts. And then when it's fully charged the light turns green. Okay, I'll turn it on. Okay, they're kind of fibbing about the screen size. If you include the bezel, then it's nine and a half inches. But the actual usable screen size is eight and three quarter inches. It's a TFT display with a resolution of 800 by 480. It's got two stereo speakers some controls in your DVD the screen is about medium quality the viewing angle is very narrow from the front you go up and down you get a lot of change it's pretty good from left to right there's a pretty big angle but it's decent my favorite settings I up the brightness to three, contrast up three, hue is the same, saturation up three. Sound quality out of the speakers isn't very good, but it's still watchable. I was able to watch two full movies and then about 30 minutes of a third DVD on one battery charge. About 15 minutes before the machine shut off, a little message popped up that said low battery. It plays widescreen movies fine, but if you play a 4x3 movie, you can't change it to 4x3 on the screen. It always stretches. I'm going to use this little 2 gigabyte. SD card and a USB adapter. The manual says you can use SD or USB drives up to 16 gigabytes. Here's the SD card menu. Yellow creature gobbles dots while being pursued through maze by monsters. And it'll play AVI files. I tried other types that won't work. MKV, MP4, WMV. It has to be an AVI file. To convert some video files to AVI, I use this free program called Video to Video, and it works automatically. I just choose AVI, and with the SD card, you can switch it and actually get it to smush in. So it'll play a 4x3 file properly. You can also set it up to repeat a folder and it will replay all the files in the folder one after another. Another cool feature is that when you turn it on it will pick up right where it left off on both the SD card and a DVD. In suburban Franklin Park you'll find Midway Manufacturing feverishly turning out 350 Pac-Man games every day. The joystick can't press eight ways. The buttons are raised up real high. And you can't do diagonals just from the way the joystick is constructed. But it's still pretty cool that they included it. It's like an extra little feature that you might use once or twice. 
So you go to the DB Power website and in software you can get the free games for the DVD player. It'll download as a zip file. You unzip it and there's about 200 games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The Nintendo game folder takes up about 20 megabytes of disk space. This is the menu. It's got the Nintendo games. Probably the only game that's playable is Space Invaders. That's because you just use two ways, left and right, and one button. The processor can't handle the games at all. There's lots and lots of frame skip. It is literally getting about 8 frames per second. It's pretty bad. Sound is stuttering. Miss Pac-Man is semi-playable. Still a lot of frame skip. A lot of the games are in Chinese or Japanese. Some of the games just don't play at all. It's just like a jumbled mess of graphics. The Nintendo game called Kart is actually a test program and it'll let you test the buttons on the joystick. And this is how I learned what these buttons do. That's the B button. That's the A button. And then these top buttons are turbo buttons. Where you press that and it keeps flashing. Same with this one. This is the A button but it's like a quick press turbo See, so actually, to play normally, you use these bottom buttons. If you press the turbo button, it does these little tiny jumps. You hit the bottom button, it jumps properly. You can put the game folder on the same SD card as the videos. And I deleted all the games except for Space Invaders and the CART test program and also these two XLS files. This way when I go into the menu there's just two Nintendo games and my video files. Makes it a lot easier to navigate. I paid only $48 for this. For that reason alone I give it a five star rating. It's definitely worth the price. I'm installing it in this guest bedroom so a guest can watch DVDs and it's also a game room and I plan to loop my little video arcade news clips from the 80s as entertainment.